generational trauma is when there is this intense emotional feeling, there is this stress, there is this difficult experiences that is being passed down unintentionally from one generation to another. So there is really like no one to blame because even the people who pass down that trauma, they don't even know that they are actually doing it. Yung generational trauma, it's everywhere. It's in mm -hmm. every aspect of our yeah. life. Fear, worry, and anxiety. It's because of the traumas from the past. When people are not able to do what they can actually do based on their potential, it's because natatakot na silang sumubok ulit. Yeah. Dahil in the past, it was something that scared them, embedded them na hindi posible, hindi yan para sa kanila. Breaking the cycle means stopping what's already stopping you so that the next generation won't have to go through it. It only takes like one person to end it and it would be amazing if that generation would be us. Being aware of the problem is one thing. Doing something about it is another. You have what it takes to create a life for yourself. You became aware of it because you're the one who's going to be the hard stop because you should be the hard stop. As soon as healing takes place, go out there and heal somebody else. Na kailangan mo talagang tapangan to really break the cycle and start the healing in your life, in your family, in the next generations as well. Of course, um, one final piece of advice for people who really want to break the cycle, who want to find the courage to say no to the things that they should know to, and finally say yes to themselves and healing. Hey guys, welcome back to Small Talk, small conversations with huge impact. My name is Alec Cuenca and I'm your host. And before anything else, I'd like to thank you so much for being here. I'm super excited na nandirito kayo ngayon because this is going to be an exciting episode. Um, and this episode is actually something that I have been meaning to create that I know na marami sa inyo ang nagre-request as well. And marami dito ang makakarelate talaga. So this episode is sponsored by Globe. And Globe believes that we should all go forward together. Whether you are a family of a single parent or you are a family of dinks or maybe a family that has a breadwinner or you're being supported by a breadwinner, Globe believes that every family is courageous, whatever the form is. And courage inspires courage as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode because in this episode, we're going to talk about a lot on finding the courage for you to move forward and break the cycles of your generational trauma. So again, thank you so much, Globe, for sponsoring this episode as we all go forward together. So today is a very special episode because I am joined with uh, one of uh, the people that I actually look up to pagdating sa social media, um, especially sa content na ginagawa niya. We're um, I'm very, very excited to introduce our guest for today, which um, is one of the top people that I, uh, that I could think of um, when it comes to this kind of topic. So um, our guest for today is a BS psychology student at Batanga State University, the National Engineering University, a motivational speaker, a passionate mental health advocate. And she is also the host of the Spotify podcast, Let's Keep Moving. Uh, which has garnered over 300,000 streams. She shares her insights on personal growth, mental health, and motivation. With a following of over 300,000 followers across her social media platforms, she uses her influence to inspire the young generation to overcome challenges and lead a more fulfilling life. More importantly, I'm very, very proud of this person, and I just cannot wait to get this podcast started. So let's all welcome to the show, Risha Marceliana. Hi, Hi Risha. Coach. Hello, Paul. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really lost of words. This is really a dream come true for me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I mean, matagal na natin pinapla na tong, um podcast session na to, So I'm just really happy na natuloy siya. Uh, marami na tayo na chikahan on the background, but I know na uh, marami rin tayo mapag-uusapan for this. So again, thank you so much. But maybe for the people who are not familiar with uh, kind of like what you do, and of course, ano ang story mo on how you got to create content about mental health and healing as well. Maybe you could share like what got you here. Anong, anong, what's your story? Well, essentially, Coach, it all started way back 2022 because that's when I shifted and I felt this call to do something meaningful which is outside of engineering and nung nasa engineering kasi ako coach I felt like I need to step out of it and I need to find the courage 
to really go out of my comfort zone and pursue an entirely different career. And that led me to psychology. And then from there, mental health really spoke to my life because it touches a lot of aspects po talaga ng buhay ko. And from there, it pushed me to create the motivational reels on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And actually, I, I don't know how social media works at that time. So it's more of an experiment. And then I was surprised that there were tractions talaga. And from there, I kind of cross-posted. And it's really the best decision of my life because it really opened a lot of opportunities po, which I think is really the reason why I got into content creation. Yeah. I mean, I love your content that you're creating. I love people who are taking that kind of risk pagdating sa content creation. But more importantly, the content that you're creating is really impacting and mm-hmm. uh, you know helping a lot of people as well. Our topic for today, uh, it's something that I am excited to talk to you about because for sure, and I have insights dito. But this is going to be about how do you find the courage to break generational traumas. But maybe to give kind of like a context then for the people who are listening. Like how do you define uh, or what is a generational trauma? Uh, for me, generational trauma is when there's this intense emotional feeling and then there's this stress, there's this difficult experiences that is being passed down unintentionally from one generation to another. And what uh, is really shocking about generational trauma, Coach, is it is unintentional. Mm-hmm. So there's really like no one to blame because even the people who pass down that trauma, they don't even know that they are actually doing it and they're passing it to generation and I think this is like really relevant because it's been a thing right now and a lot of people are talking about it but there's only a few people and there's only a few personalities who really find the courage and who are willing to tell their story on how to actually break it. Yeah, and I I love what you said about it's not really intentional because for some um they might blame yeah. you know their generational traumas ah, kasi ganito yung napasa sa akin but ganyan <laughs> but it's not really something intentional na ginagawa and you mentioned that um you know the people who unintentionally pass the traumas are also parang un- in- they also got it unintentionally yeah exactly na- nakukuha coach. din nila yun from the other uh, you know kind of like their parents like could you maybe talk about how far does the generational trauma <laughs> go well absolutely coach it could go it could go far it could go to generations to generations and it only takes like one person to end it mm. and it would be amazing if that generation would be us mm. i mean our generation should be the hard stop and without fully acknowledging it and taking actionable steps talaga to move forward and to get past that trauma and to heal it, it could go for generations, coach. Yeah. And what was your journey in terms of generational trauma? Paano mo na-realize na, oh, meron ako mga bagay na kailangan i-heal? Wow, I love that question, coach. Because sometimes the most, uh, the people who are really, uh, who are really going beyond are the one who experience so much pain. So a lot of people would what, sorry, what sorry, what do you what do you mean by that? Like those who go beyond experience a lot of emotional pain? Because sometimes you need to experience that for you to go through it. And there's like uh, the like I learned this from you, the only way out is through. And so I think the most powerful and most creative people are the ones who experience trauma because if they experience trauma, then they have what it takes to get out of it. So for me, uh, the story that it where it all started was when I was um, in engineering. I felt like I tell this story all the time, but um, it was very powerful for me because at that time, I really wanted to shift. But I don't know how to converse it and to open it up with my parents. And that's when I realized... Why am I like this? Because I'm 20 at that time and I don't even know how to communicate my feelings, my emotions to my parents, which I should have. It was this time, coach, ang nagsabi talaga sa family ko na magsishift ako was my younger sister. Mm. Like, uh, she was seven, eight at that time. And my papa was asking me why and I can't even say anything. And that's what, that is my call to action. Like, why is this happening to my life? And that's when I knew that I have to do something about it. And Mm. it was psychology, it was my work on mental health, it was my inner work that really 
pushed me to fix that trauma. It's a lot more painful if you get to look back and realize that you did not do something about it. Mm, yeah. So this feeling of not being able to speak up, mm-hmm. it's it's kind of the, the the trauma that you had to face, right? Yeah. So um, are there any other parang traumas that was unintentionally passed down to you that uh, you also realized at that time? I think it's when it comes to relationships because when you are in a traditional Filipino household, of course, you are with your uh, mama, your papa, your siblings, and then you also get to learn from these people. Sabi nga po, diba, uh, you get to learn from what th- the people around you are rather than what they teach you. So you get to see uh, how do they work out on relationships, how do they parent us. And so growing up, sa tingin ko, coach, it would be the relationship of my parents. Very obvious reason. I've seen them um, work things out without even saying sorry. So it's more like, okay, when I get into relationships, when I get into a romantic relationships, my initial instinct would be like, ah, okay pala, na pag uh, nasa relationship ka, okay lang na walang sorry. So it was was unintentional. It was something that I don't even know what's happening. And it's not only in relationships. It could also be on your friends, on the people around you, in the workplace. Like, I I wasn't told how to say sorry sa family ko, sa household. So, mm. why would I even say sorry sa workplace, sa work, sa mga katrabaho ko? So, it's, it's unintentional. But at the same time, if we're not aware of it, it could happen and it can really affect your personal and professional life. And I think that's what happened to me, Coach. You're right. It, it really affects everything. Parang you might think of it na, oh, you know, I saw my parents. And, you know, hearing your story, like you were this little child. And as you were growing up, you see them kind of like fix their relationship, fix their marriage without even saying sorry. And that's kind of like what was passed down to you. Mm-hmm. Na, oh, you know, the I don't really know how to say sorry. And it affects everything. Yeah. Right, so that's one way that uh, you know generational trauma gets or kind of manifests into your life, uh, but it also affects a lot of people. Like for I know, for all I know, you know something that I'm realizing as well is, the uh, young generational trauma. It's it's everywhere. It's mm-hmm. in every aspect of yeah. our lives. Like for example, when finances, like especially here in the Philippines, I grew up in a kind of like lower middle class mm-hmm. family. And uh, finances is something that for me, dun din ako parang napasahan ng generational trauma. Di naman nila pinasa sa akin na, oh, ito yung, ito yung trauma namin, ito yung gagawin mo. But it's more of, I saw them as a child, nakita ko yung mga magulang ko na nag-aaway lagi sa pera. So, um, kind of like a generational trauma that was passed down to me is that, you know, money is the source of all problems. Oh, yeah. So, hindi naman nila sinasadya. But for me, growing up, that was kind of my thing as well. And I think in one of my podcasts, I also shared na I had a really bad relationship with money. Na pag may dumadating na pera, pinawalbas ko agad. Mm-hmm. I couldn't save. And I just think na responsible ako. But no, it's actually a generational trauma that was passed down to me na, you know, money is a bad thing. So, I wanted to kind of like mm-hmm. get rid of it as well. So, um, how about you? How in, in the finances part? The... I can completely relate. Because <laughs> yung father ko po, yung papa ko po, very, very thrifty coach. Like literal, uh, every time, especially now that I became part of your community, especially recently, I kind of, I became so happy spending my money and I loved it because I think it's it's a give and take. It's an energy. Money is abundance. Money is energy. So I felt like I'm so happy spending it. Pero every time na nasa bahay, parang sasabihin ng papa mo na, ah, wag kang gumasos ganyan. Mahalin mo ang pera. Ganito yung pagmahal sa pera. Pag, uh, the way you love money is you save it. You only save it and save it and save it. So there's... Um, given my generation, I was exposed to shopping, to shopping <laughs> online. So it's more like the goals and in terms of values do not align. And when you're not aware of it, that it's generational trauma, di ba, coach, you kind of build that resentment to your father. Yeah. Na kaya, uh, uh, I, I hate my father kasi ganito siya, kasi tinitipid niya ako. Well, in fact, baka na-experience niya to back in the past yeah. where uh, he had problems with money, where he had also trauma or money trauma. So, it's it's putting yourself on 
this understanding that people went through it as well. That's why they are projecting yeah. stuff on you. Oh, that's a good one. Parang it, it's not that they're trying to hurt you mm-hmm. or they're trying to make you safe just for the sake of saving. But it's really what was passed down to them. Na parang, um, especially the, o- the older generations mm-hmm. or the previous generations, I would say. Um, they lived in you know times of war, times of crisis. Yeah. So it was really necessary for them to save. Like for them, yung trauma na experience nila was uh, money is you gotta you gotta keep it, you yeah. know, because the world is scary. And you know, to be fair, nakatawot talaga sa panahon Uh-oh. nila. <laughs> Kila mo talagang mag mag save. Uh, but today's different, mm-hmm. right? It's less uh you know again we're we're living in the most abundant era yeah, i truly exactly. believe that um and there are some practices and there are some beliefs na hindi na talaga pasok dito sa sa generation natin which is now okay lang oh. diba mm-hmm. dati naman nakakatakot talaga magsend ng pera sa online yeah. like gcash hindi mo hawak yung pera but now it's it's kind of normal mm-hmm. but then babalik at babalik ka sa oy hindi nila intentionally ipasa yan mm-hmm. right it um it's also something that they've experienced na they're also trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah and the thing is, coach, you don't have to fix it. Like, you don't have to go out of your way to try to change your parents, to try to change the people around you. Let them let them learn their lesson. I think that's essentially what we have to remember. Uh, fix your fix yourself and you'll be surprised that the people around you will see it as light and you will become their permission piece to also change themselves because it would be it would take so much work if you're going to uh, change or save your parents. Yeah. And this journey of you uh, like kind of understanding for sure hindi to madali yeah. na, you know having this kind of awareness even the process of mm-hmm. getting that awareness um, question like how how does it manifest or how does it affect your emotional well-being your mental and emotionally um, itong mga generational traumas that was passed on to you I have to mention coach that my uh, uh, family specifically my father is a huge alcoholic person mm-hmm. so I have this like fear and I have this intense fear of um, that I'm not safe and in terms of manifestations in terms of my mental well-being and my emotional well-being it reflects so much that I don't usually open up my feelings and what I do is I bottle it up, I repress it, and so when people get to be with me and they trigger me, that's what's happening. I uh, I lash out, I uh, do uncontrolled outbursts, which is unreasonable, but at some point reasonable because that's what I learned and that's what I believed. And this, I think, is also the root causes of uh, uh, less self-esteem. Uh, less uh, self-worth, it it all boils down to generational trauma without us even noticing. Yeah. So it's it's this feeling na parang hindi ako safe, hindi ako magaling, hindi ako uh, worthy for that job, hindi ako worthy for that money, hindi ako worthy to be part of something. And so what happens is we're not giving ourselves permission to actually be part of something bigger because we're used to being bottled up, we're used to like uh, uh, putting ourselves in uh, a cage, and I think that's that's so painful because mm-hmm. we're all meant to we're all meant to shine. I have I have this huge belief that we're all meant to be abundant. We're all meant to shine. We're all meant to take up our space, and it's just that something from the past is holding us back uh. from thriving, from knowing our worth, and from doing a beautiful life, coach. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. I do believe that success is all about uncovering your traumas, finding a way to create an untraumatized version of you. Yeah. Because at the very core, lahat ng tao magaling. Mm-hmm. Lahat ng tao mala- mataas ang potential. Lahat ng tao um, napakadaming skills and talents na pwede magawa. Except for a lot of people, the, the traumas that they experienced when they were chilled, it covers them from actually shining their mm-hmm. true light. Right? And so I, I 
I agree with what you said, no? Na, na sometimes the generational traumas um it affects the well-being um because alam mong uh, I do believe like fear, worry and anxiety it's because of the traumas from the past. Yeah. So when people are not able to do what they could actually do based on their potential, it's because natatakot na silang sumubok ulit. Yeah. Dahil in the past, it was something that scared them. It was something that embedded them na hindi posible, na hindi yan para sa kanila. Yung trauma na yon kind of like covers themselves up para hindi nila mas maabot yon. But again, you know, um, especially when, when it comes to the success then, and just overall good well-being, mm-hmm. like, it's it's a journey that you need to go through na, okay, um, I need to uncover all of these things that are weighing me down. Um, kasi, yun nga, at the end of it, mangyayari, mababawasan ka ng self-esteem, mm-hmm. mababawasan ka ng self-confidence, right? And yeah, I, I really love um, what you shared and how it, you know, how it basically manifests and affects our uh, well-being. Are there any other ways that it affects, um, aside from, you know, losing the self-confidence, losing self-esteem? Focusing more on family, since we Filipinos, we love our families and we always go back home. I think... uh, um, what your parents would teach you would also impact uh, how you would handle the world outside. Like, for example, if your parents are uh, separated, mm-hmm. so what's happening is like if one parent uh, is consistently telling you na ang lahat ng lalaki dyan ay lolokohin ka, ang lahat ng uh, tao ay lolokohin ka, you would have or you would bring this to places. It would really manifest in so many ways because it would stop you from trusting people and i think it's it's one of the hardest things because we we should trust people and we should always look after other people but if we were taught by our parents na alalukuin ka lang yan yeah. ah sasaktan ka lang yan so ang hirap na makawala dun coach kapag nakuha mo siya from childhood kasi very Sabi nga po ang mga matatalino, di ba, yung mga bata pa, they remember things. And they only remember the most painful and the most yeah. enjoying moments. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Na parang when, I, so I, I read somewhere that long-term memories, uh, which in our case, it's really the, the traumas as mm-hmm. well, kasama doon included. Um, but the long-term memories or the beliefs that we build, is based upon the strongest emotions mm-hmm. that we experience as a child. Like, I don't know. I mean, for a lot of people, have you guys watched Inside Out 2? I mean, really good movie. Yeah. Have you watched it? Yeah, yes. Diba? Coach, I mean, it, it visually explained traumas mm-hmm. and beliefs, how, how it's being formed. Pero pag matataas yung emotions na yun, dun, dun natin naalala. But again, hindi ito intentional na pinapasa. Mm-hmm. No? Our family, maybe our parents as well. Like, if we ourselves in their eyes. Sila din, as a child, they experience yeah. traumas growing up na pinasa sa kanila ng lolo mm-hmm. natin. And yung lolo't lola natin, pinasa lang din yung trauma na yun from yeah. our great-grandparents. And so, um, it's unless there's like this one person who says, oops, like the healing starts here. Mm-hmm. Dun lang talaga magbabago. Yeah. Right? If If this person actually says na, okay, I'm gonna break the pattern right here or break the cycle. Um, dito lang mangyari yun. But I wanna ask, like, for you, what does it mean to break the cycle? For me, breaking the cycle means uh, stopping what's already stopping you so that the next generation won't have to go through it. It's telling yourself that uh, I know it exists, the trauma exists, but I do not choose that trauma. And uh, I... Uh, choose that I am the hard stop so that my kids, my children, my grandchildren won't have to go through it. And it would be such an amazing honor, an amazing legacy to be able to do that and to be able to be that person who stopped that, that generational trauma. One of the best ways that for you to break the cycle of generational trauma is really to have the courage, mm-hmm. right? It's it I think I do believe it starts there. Yeah. Na kailangan mo talagang tapangan 
tapangan, lakasan ng loob mo to really um, break the cycle and start the healing mm-hmm. in your life, in your family, in the next generations as well. Um, but I also know that there are like other steps mm-hmm. for, for us to do it. So can you share like what are some like concrete steps for a person to break the cycle of their generational trauma? Uh, I totally agree, Coach. It it really starts with one decision. It it and sometimes it's only one decision away, and you'll be surprised that it might be a hard step at first, but eventually it's worth it. So the concrete steps for you to break that generational trauma is first try journaling and try meditation practices. Try self reflecting. Um, there's this famous and beautiful quote from. Carl Rogers, a psychiatrist from the 20th century, and he says, it is only the client who knows what hurts the most. It is only the client who knows what pains them the most. And it is only the client who can fix it. And I think it all goes down to knowing what you're feeling and identifying them. Because yes, uh, therapy works, counseling works, but not everybody can afford therapy. Let's let's face it. And not all mentally stable people did therapy. Mm-hmm. So it all boils down to every day, start journaling, start putting down what happened because from there, you get to separate your thoughts, your feelings, what happened from yourself. Mm-hmm. The reason why we tend to associate ourselves or our self-worth, our self-esteem, and our self-love is because it's all in here. It's all in here. It's all stuck in our body. But once you write it down, once you start moving your body, once you start using that feeling, that anger, that resentment into writing, into moving your body, you can watch how uh, how it can be changed and how you'll be changed once you do those steps. So, it it might be huge like the coach generational trauma yeah. parang ang big niya parang paano ko to gagawin i need to be with other people i need to be that but the steps it doesn't have to be big it i think that's what scares a lot of people they feel like oh they have to do this and they have to attend this they have to pay for this but even before that give yourself some briefing and do some work it's like diba it it's only 10 minute meditation away coach to calm yourself to meditate to ground yourself and it will be life changing especially coach kapag consistent yeah i love that so uh you know uh tama ba based on what i hear is number 1 of course you got to identify it mm-hmm. right so identifying really um and here is like where courage comes in cuz mm-hmm. you need to be courageous honest. enough to have those brutally honest conversations mm-hmm. with yourself na uy this is um, a belief that was passed on in a generational trauma sa akin yeah. right so number 1 is identify the uh, identify the traumas or what's stopping mm-hmm. you second is separate it from yourself mm-hmm. which is to put it in writing Okay? Yeah. To put it in writing, which means na kailangan mailabas mo sa katawan mo, sa puso mo, sa isip mo yung, yung experience na yon, yung trauma na yon, yung um, limiting belief na yon na meron ka, yung hurt or yung pain na yon na uh, you, you, you energetically release mm-hmm. it, right? So you separate it from yourself. And third is um, you, you take it one step at a time. Mm-hmm. Like you don't need to change agad and be healed agad. Yeah. Like healing is a process. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, you don't need to be healed automatic pag na-realize mo na, ah, okay, ito nga pala yung kailangan ko, i-heal, heal ko na siya. Hindi. It's a process and you just need to take it day by day to kind of like move your body, mm-hmm. create new experiences for you, create new beliefs for you that will work para sa'yo. Tama ba? Yes. Yeah. So I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, any other ways na people could, you know, kind of like break the cycle? Uh, I agree, Coach. It only gets uh, harder once you do those steps. And I want to tell everybody, especially our listeners today, that sometimes it gets harder when you're in the middle of it. Mm. It's okay if you don't have it all figured out. It's okay to feel like it's it's still fresh because 
it's huge eh. Like, generational trauma, it's huge. Yeah. It won't be fixed just by journaling every day. It won't be fixed by just simply moving your body. You have to, it, it's a combination and an interconnection of a lot of things. Sometimes you have to move your body. Sometimes you have to surround yourself with people, di ba, coach? I think essentially that's the next step. Surround yourself with people who supports that and yeah. supports that vision. People who went through the same thing. People who are, uh, who can feel it. People who've been there, because as because more than ever they know how it felt like, and when they know how it felt like, they can tell you based from experience, not just based from theory. Okay, this is what I did. I for sure will. Um, this for sure will also help you. You can try it, and it's uh, an, it's an experiment, coach. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like a trial and error, mm-hmm. then what works for you, how you can heal, you know. So iba pa rin yun eh. Iba iba ang proseso ng healing, you know. Na pwede mong apply, pwede mong subukan. But you gotta find your own pace, mm-hmm. right? You gotta find the best methods that work for you. Like, um, for some really heavy journaling works. Yeah. Like whatever energetic release that they could do to, to do that. And I love what you said about that we need to find other people. Mm-hmm. Kailangan mong maghanap ng mga tao na kasama mo sa healing journey mo. Who's also taking up a lot of courage to break the cycle mm-hmm. of generational traumas. Kailangan mong maghanap ng mga tao who has already done the healing part yeah. of the process and learn from them para naman you don't need to do it alone. Mm-hmm. Kasi uh, especially in my own healing journey as well. Isa yan sa mga na-realize ko na, oh, I think that's the reason why I love doing the podcast so much, especially doing yung mga tao na kikinig ng podcast, is they really resonate and relate to me on a, on a personal level. Mm-hmm. And I'm here just telling my story. And you get the feedback, you get the comments. I read your comments, guys, by the way. And nababasa ko na hindi lang ako nag-iisa. Na marami din sa mga nakikinig na ganun din ang pinagdadaanan. And so, for me, having the evidence na maraming tao mm-hmm. na ganun din ang pinagdadaanan makes it a little bit lighter for me. Makes the journey a little bit lighter for me and mas napupush ako na ipagpatuloy yun. Isa sa mga naisip ko na paraan to break the cycle is to set boundaries. Mm-hmm. What can you say about that? I can, hands down, talaga yan, coach, isa sa mga pinaka-pinaka-importante. Setting boundaries for me is... Protecting your energy. It's not pushing people away. It's knowing that this is my limit and this is what I tolerate and therefore you have to follow it because I respect my boundary. And some of the steps in which you can really build that strong boundary is first communicate it. In this generation, we tend to forget about communication when it's essentially one of the most important things we have to do. Sometimes, ang kinocommunicate na natin, coach, kapag puno na tayo. Like, kapag na-triggered na. <laughs> which, na. Yes, coach. Kapag sumabog na. And I think, uh, learning from this conversation, it shouldn't be done that way. Yeah. Conversation or communication in itself should be done before so that we can avoid it. Just by simply telling your family that, uh, please do not disturb me. I'm working. Uh, please, can you lower down your voices? Huwag kayo masyado maingay. Uh, please, can you allow me to do solo traveling? Can you... You know, it's really finding the courage to have that conversation, no yeah. matter how hard it gets. Did you experience that? Yes, coach. <laughs> it's, you know, it it's all stuck here. Eh? Pero there has to be, there has to be a day and a time. It's also right timing na kailangan mong i-voice out yung opinions mo, yung sa tingin mo tama, so yeah. that the people around you, hindi sila mag-guess kung yeah. nasaktan ka na ba nila, kung na-offend ka na ba nila. If hindi mo i-communicate yun, you'll live in this constant victimhood mindset na, yeah. ah, hindi ako inalala ng magulang ko, hindi ako inalala ng mga kaibigan ko, hindi ako inalala ng mga taong nasa paligid ko. When in fact, you could have communicated it. Second is, uh, coach, I would say, uh, limit your yes to people and limit your time to them. So know what's worth your energy, know what's worth your time. Because I think one of the most important things I've learned is to know what's worth your energy, know what's worth your yeses. Because it will really determine how you will go through your healing journey. 
if you know how to say yes to uh, a certain situation, if you know when to say no, everything will flow smoothly. There was this uh, like moment back in the past, coach, mm-hmm. na kaka shift ko lang. I was not really comfortable sharing everything I've been through. Cause I'm not really comfortable. I'm not comfortable, especially with the people. And so there's this huge family vacation. Hindi po ako sumama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like my whole mother side, uh, nag beach sila sa Batangas, and hindi po ako sumama. And it's the best decision ever mm-hmm. because. I can only imagine the questions. I can only imagine the conversations around there. And I'm not ready for that uh, for that moment. And I'm giving myself that time. I love that. Na it needs to be like an open communication mm-hmm. din talaga. And uh, more importantly, it's like limiting your yeses. Yeah. And again, it's not an easy task, right? <laughs> like setting boundaries. It's up until now, actually. Mm-hmm. I'm, it's a it's a work in progress for me uh, personally. For example, ngayon in my family, nagsisimula na ako kumita, right? And then of course, nakita rin naman ng family ko yon mm-hmm. na ooh, me, oh, mo okay na yung kita niya. So uh, now, medyo dumadami yung hingi nila in terms of like the money, ganyan. So of course, before it was different. Eh? Like all the money I was keeping to myself, mm-hmm. sa akin lang yun. I was able to share it with them. Now that I'm kind of like handling a business, the money is kind of like reinvested back to the business. They would ask for money. It's it was a practice for me to say like, okay, no, because this is actually uh, a way for me to keep building the wealth. Eventually, pag you know, pagkatapos ito, I could give a lot. I remember the conversation that I had with my mother. Sinabi ko sa sinabi ko sa mama ko na, ma, uh, magiipon ako, magstart ako ng business. So expect that I will not give um, any money for the meantime. Hindi muna po ako makakapagbigay. Surprisingly, ang takot kasi natin doon is that uh, baka mag-away Magalit. or baka magalit or baka sabihin, ano ba naman yan? Kumikita ka na nga, damot mo naman. <laughs> or maybe baka hindi nila magawa ng paraan. But the thing is, when I did that, it, surprisingly, it actually empowered my mother to like, mm-hmm. okay, I'll find a way. Mm-hmm. Which was, she was already doing it. Mm-hmm. Except, meron talaga tayo sa culture ng Filipinos na, you we know, still give. We, we give it back <laughs> to our parents, which is okay. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, pag dinedemand na, you gotta be clear with the nose. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're gonna be in this cycle of just giving and giving and giving and not giving enough to yourself. Mm-hmm. So, darating yung point, sabi mo nga, mauubos ka, sasabog ka na, right? And we don't want that. Yeah. Para din makaiwas ka sa mga times na sasabog ka na lang. Communicate even the, the tiniest details. Isa sa mga practices na ginagawa namin ni ng partner ko, si Yani. For the past week as well, we do like this check-ins every mm-hmm. night. Like, hey, have I hurt you today? Mm-hmm. Like, tinatanong siya, hey, have I, hurt, have I hurt you today? Meron ba akong nasabi na ano? And then she would actually tell me that. It's not as big. Mm-hmm. No, it can be like super simple. Yeah, kanina nang niyo akong tubig, di mo ko inabot ala tubig. It can be as simple yeah. as that. But it, it, ano it adds up kasi eh. Mm-hmm. Like, that small thing, small thing, no, gulat ka na ang laki na na pala. Yeah. But then, you know, for some, may, oh, eh naman yan, tubig lang. It's a practice of mm-hmm. being in open communication na ina-explain mo na even the tiniest detail, oh, I don't like what you said kanina, this word, I, I think, trigger ako dyan, so don't use this word, please. Use another word, or kanina tinaasan mo yung bosses mo, don't do that, mm-hmm. like, you know. um, Having that open communication, prevents us from uh, those moments na sumasabog kami. And every time, dumadating kami sa point na sumasabog na, we both know na, oo, kasi nagkukulang na tayo sa communication time natin, mm-hmm. sa having that communication time. Um, to just really connect with one another and really talk about, again, th- mm-hmm. having that courage to say na, oh, I don't like this. It's, it's again, setting your boundaries. Eh. Hindi pwede to. No, so yeah, in, in families, in relationships, relationships, it's really important to set your boundaries, right? And again, alam ko, guys, hindi madalito, hindi madaling magset ng boundaries, but it is important. Mm-hmm. You gotta find the courage to say no to the things that will not serve you, to say no to the things that will drain you of your energy, so that you can say yes to the things that really matters to you. Yeah. Yes, we communicated it. Yes, we limit our yes to people. But at the same time, let's also stick 
to that boundary. There would be moments where that boundary would uh, be uh, disrespected by other people. That yeah. boundaries, Allah. there would be, yeah, <laughs> there would be certain situations na parang paulit-ulit na lang na nangyayari. It's about acknowledging that we're human beings. We get affected by emotions. We get affected by circumstances. Like, even if you have communicated it clearly, may mga moments na hindi tayo makakatanggi because we love them. It only takes conscious steps and uh, uh, little steps in order for that practice to be consistent. Yeah, I love that. So it's still it's still a practice. Mm-hmm. Like so you don't you don't get to like break the cycle once and for all like today. Na, <laughs> not today. But it's a process mm-hmm. as well. Like you take steps towards that. And setting boundaries is yeah. very important that. How does self-compassion play into breaking the cycle and breaking generational trauma? Self-compassion for me is what brought me this far. Self-compassion coach is giving yourself a heads up that this is not going to be easy. Mm. And therefore, despite it not being easy, I choose to have the courage to go through it anyway. Self-compassion is being kinder to yourself. Mm -hmm. Self-compassion is telling yourself that it's okay if it's taking you longer than usual. Because the, the biggest fear I have when it comes to healing, especially for other people, is they compare their journey to different journeys. Or, bakit siya ang bilis niyang naka-move on? Bakit siya ang ganda ng family dynamics nila? Bakit sila okay na sila ng partner niya? Bakit sila ganito? Well, in fact, you don't have to look for other people's situation. Yeah. Self-compassion is going back home, going back to yourself, and knowing that you'll be there. You'll get yeah. there. It's just that it takes work to get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love that. I do believe self-compassion is a superpower. Mm-hmm. Na yeah. just like what you said, na if you have that compassion for yourself, like it's okay, mm-hmm. you have your own timeline. At the very core of it, parang babalik at babalik ka lang na you just gotta focus on yourself. Um, you don't need to compare yourself to others. And that's the key. Eh. If you mm-hmm. are compassionate enough to yourself to say na, hey, it's okay, that you realize it just now, um, and you're gonna start through the process, and other people have it quickly. You don't even know, right? No, yeah. that's also what self-compassion does. It stops you from comparing mm-hmm. other people's highlights, which yun lang naman na kita natin. We don't see the struggles. We don't see the challenges of other people. We only see the highlights, mm-hmm. the good parts. And self-compassion allows us to take a step back and say, na, oops, uh, this is what's going to work for me. And I'm going to choose that as well. Yeah. And and give my myself permission to, to do that. Um you all parang sa kanina while you were explaining it na realize ko na nakakatakot din pala yung self compassion like oof na it's it's not easy <laughs> yeah, to be self compassionate i think it really sobrang laking trabaho ng pagiging self compassion we um, makes it sound easy ko oh uh, <laughs> self compassion kasi parang oo self compassion but self compassion is actually battling you know minimizing the, the noise, noise of the external world and just actually saying, hey, it's okay, chill. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Din Coach, the biggest misconception we have about healing and breaking generational trauma is that once we feel like we healed already, it's not like we don't get triggered anymore. We will get triggered <laughs> a lot of times. And the fact that you get triggered, it means that you're actually evolving, you're changing, and you're moving forward. So, it's okay if it feels like it's the first time. Yeah. It's okay if your mom still annoys you. <laughs> it's okay if your relationship with other people is still shaky. It's okay if you still cry over it. Yeah. It's okay if it's not all flowing smoothly right yeah. now. Just by being conscious that you are actually taking the steps naman to move forward, then I think you'll be good. Once you understand that you will still get triggered, hindi mo wawala yan. Matitrigger ka pa rin na matitrigger. Pero ang mag-iiba doon is how you respond to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, you, re- you you would have more space between doon sa dati ka kung paano ka mag-react. Magkakaroon ka ng space to realize na, oh, may choice ako. I have a choice. Paano ako magre-respond sa trigger na to? But the trigger is still there. Yeah. Hindi mo wawala yung yeah. trigger. How important is asking for support in breaking generational trauma and finding the courage to, like, say, or set boundaries and break the cycle? It's... Uh 
really, 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 really important coach. I think I would not be able to share uh, this uh, story, this lesson, if not for the people who have helped me, who have supported me, and whom I have received support from. Getting support is uh, something that is close to my heart because if not for my mentors, if not for you, if not for my coaches, I don't think I'd ever be consistent in sharing my story and being okay with it and being able to be vulnerable. Asking for support means opening up a part of yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard to do that. It's so hard to be open to people, let alone a community. So it's so important that you find your people no matter how hard it is because the right people will meet you where you are i've been i've been telling that to myself all the time the right people will find me for as long as i am aligned with myself and uh, sobrang mapapadali kasi coach yung healing process i'm not saying it's uh, easy but it would be a relief if you have people with you yeah. i've i've attended a lot of retreats coach <laughs> <laughs> i have uh, I have traveled to attend retreats and I am a living testament that these coaching, these coaches, this work works and it only takes a few people to shine that light and to be able to save other people as well. Because having a community is like reminding your brain that you are not alone yeah. and that you don't have to be alone. Yeah, I love that and um, I'm, I'm really grateful as well. Mm -hmm. I think what allowed me to attract you is that we're also into this work of healing and like you have your own community like i have my own community but these are the people who makes it lighter for us mm -hmm. na feeling ko kung wala rin yung mga communities na pinasok natin na sinalihan natin mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a lonely journey like healing breaking the cycle mm -hmm. saying no to your family your friends or um, saying no to the generational trauma na pinasa sa atin. It's really scary mm -hmm. having the right community, having the right people give us a little bit more courage. Actually, reframe the traumas na pinasa sa atin. So, having the right people, it makes it easier. And also, coach, it's like online when you're doing social media and parang kapag may mga nag-comment sa'yo ng mga haters, it's just that they're not your people. You will only meet them if they're aligned with you. Yeah. So, it's not like oh, I have to please these people. It's just that you're not aligned yet. Yeah. And if ever you'll become aligned, you'll meet again. Love yeah. that. Thank you so much. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation with you. Feels like we can talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. pa. Yeah. Pa <laughs> um, of course, um, one final piece of advice for people who really want to break the cycle, mm -hmm. who want to find the courage to say no to the mm -hmm. things that they should know to, and finally say yes to themselves and healing. Being aware of the problem is one thing, but uh, doing something about it is another. Uh, you have what it takes to create a life for yourself and you became aware of it for a reason. You became aware of it because you're the one who's going to be the hard stop because you should be the hard stop. We all have all the resources, the tools, the people. We have amazing influencers, coaches uh, who made this information easy. So please, please make use of it. Always make sure that you remind yourself that you are allowed to be the first in your family to do things differently. You are allowed to be the first in your family to cut that curse. You're allowed to be the first in your family to cut the generational trauma. And so heal yourself. Because uh, I think it's, it's so empowering when you get to have this legacy in life that I was able to heal my generational trauma. And when you heal yourself, it's true that you'll become other people's permission pieces. And I love this quote by Maya Angelou, as soon as healing takes place, go out there and heal somebody else. And that's the wow. gift. That's the gift that we have in this work. And you'll be surprised. You'll be that person who'll, who'll shine light. And it's going to be a beautiful and worth it journey. That was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you're listening to this and you're still here, it's mainly because there's also like a, an idea that is planted with you that you can be the first one to really break the cycle. Yeah. Give yourself that permission and allow to see the magic in it. Once you create or find that courage, now you inspire others to also find their own courage mm -hmm. to break their own cycles. And you're changing the world as we speak. But it 
really starts with with you. So if you're listening to this, like you got what it takes. There's something in you. Sa you binigay, sa you binigay yung awareness na yan, sa you binigay yung vision na yan na mag hard stop in terms of the traumas and create that generation of healed of a healed generation. And it starts with you. Trust yourself as well and trust mm-hmm. God, trust the universe. You're not alone in this journey. There are also a lot of people who are uh, with you on this. And we're with you on this. But again, Risha, thank you so much. This was beautiful. Um, I love this conversation. Hopefully, uh, we can have more conversations mm-hmm. like this. We're um, going to talk a But thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Um, if ever people would like to learn more about what you do and listen to your podcast yeah. as well, so please share it to our viewers and our listeners. So um, I do motivational talks. I do content online about mental health, life, adulting, and everything in between. So you can follow me on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, uh, Risha Marceliana. And then uh, I also have a podcast coach called Let's Keep Moving. I post every Monday. So uh, yeah, it's it's a great uh, thing to start the week. So uh, also give me a follow there. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Guys, if you na- enjoy the podcast, na to, Definitely, you would enjoy uh, Risha's podcast. So I'll link it down below. You can check it out. But again, thank you so much. Thank you, um, maraming maraming salamat. And so yeah, guys, if you like this episode, please don't forget to give it a like, a follow. I want to hear your comments. If you have any questions, suggestions, I also upload this on YouTube. So if you're watching on YouTube, hello, you can see the yung mga mukha namin dito. So it's a video podcast. You can follow me on all of my socials at Alec Cuenca and at Risha Mar- Marceliana. If you want more motivational and inspiring talks as well. So, yun lang. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next episode. Peace.